Hello and welcome to the week 8 recap video. Um, this week had a lot of interesting games. Everything went about as I expected. Some did not, but we're going to jump right into this. There's, uh, there's one thing I want to bring up at the end of the video. I think it's going to be... <laughs> It's something that's been irking me this uh, since this week ended. But let's jump right into it. First was number 25, Memphis at Houston. I had Memphis winning this game on the road, and they did. They did get the win against their, uh, their opponent here. Houston kept it close the whole game, but Memphis comes out on top as expected. Next was number 19, Michigan at number 2, Penn State. I had Penn State winning this game, and I think uh, I expected it to be closer. I did not expect uh, expect what happened to happen. Penn State blew Michigan out of the water, 42 to 13. Michigan was just left in the dust. So Michigan comes away with another loss and another conference loss, essentially knocking them out of the race for the Big Ten championship, and worse, out of the top 25. Next is number 11, USC, at number 13, Notre Dame. Now, I had Notre Dame winning this game in a close, tight-fought battle. Kind of low scoring is what I expected in the 20s, or low 20s, maybe mid to high 20s. It was not that. Uh, Notre Dame beat the pants off of USC. Beat them 49-14 to to the point where Notre Dame pulled their starters in the, end, in the uh, fourth quarter, as did USC. Uh, Maryland at number five, Wisconsin. Now, I have Wisconsin winning this game, and they won it pretty handily here. Uh, Maryland's been doing well at the beginning of the season, but this season they've started playing some harder opponents in the latter part of the season, so I, I just I don't think they're going to uh, gonna end too well. Next was Oklahoma State, number 10 Oklahoma State, at Texas. Now, I had Texas keeping this one close, but losing in the end, and that's pretty much exactly what happened. Now, Oklahoma State was trailing 10-7 to in the fourth quarter. They kicked a field goal to take it to overtime, and then in overtime, stopped Texas from scoring, and um, put up another field goal to win the game 13-10. to Now, why this is impressive for Texas, even though it's two back-to-back -back losses against Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, they held Oklahoma to 29 points. Defensively, doesn't look too good on paper, but considering they were supposed to give up somewhere in the range of 40, that's good. Then to hold Oklahoma State, one of the most, one of the most powerful offenses in the Big 12, and Texas holds them to 13 points. And takes them to overtime. That's this Texas defense is doing really well for themselves right now, and I think that's going to build confidence. And it may not have implications for Texas on a title this year, but they're going to be back in contention soon. I can feel it. Uh, next is Tennessee at number one, Alabama. Alabama ran away with this one. We all knew that would happen. Uh, next was Syracuse at number eight, Miami of Florida. While I had predicted Miami to win, and they did. I don't consider this a letdown game for Syracuse at all. Yeah, they're coming off, they're coming off the win against number two Clemson on the road, uh, or at home, I mean, and going on the road to Miami. Um, they came off the win and came into this one, and you kind of expected Miami to just blow over them. But Syracuse only lost the game by eight points. The final was 27 to 19. So Miami comes away with the win, remains unscathed on their season, but Syracuse looked good. So keep an eye out for Syracuse. They're a much better team this year than they have been in the past. Next is North Carolina at number 14, Virginia Tech. I had Virginia Tech winning this game, and they just sort of blew North Carolina out of the water. Next was Indiana at number 18, Michigan State. Now, Michigan State comes away with a win here, 17-9, to but they trailed for most of the game. So it's not, it, it was a rough win for them, but it's a win nonetheless, and it keeps them alive in that Big Ten hunt. They are still undefeated in the conference. Their only loss is to Notre Dame. Next comes number 20, UCF at Navy. I had UCF winning this one, but I thought Navy kept it close, and that's pretty much exactly what happened. I don't remember the exact final. It's something like 31-28, somewhere around there. But uh, UCF comes away with the win. 
Next was number nine, Oklahoma at Kansas State. I had Oklahoma winning this one. I thought Kansas State would keep it close for three quarters, but in the fourth, Oklahoma would just pull away. Oklahoma didn't pull away. They ended up winning the game like 42 to 35, but it was a last minute touchdown to take the lead. And it, it just, it wasn't a good look for Oklahoma right now. But a win is a win, and it keeps them in the top 10, and it keeps them on the hunt for a uh, potential bowl spot, uh, playoff spot as well. Next would be number 16, South Florida at Tulane. I had South Florida win in this one, and they got the win pretty handily. Uh, they remain undefeated, one of two undefeated teams in the AAC. Um, that would be South Florida and Central Florida. Next on the list would be number 24, LSU at Ole Miss. I had LSU win in the game, and they did pretty easily. They, they kind of ran the score up on Ole Miss, but Ole Miss put up some points themselves. Next was number 21, Auburn at Arkansas. Uh, Auburn comes away with the win here like I thought they would, and they put up like 50-something points on Arkansas. They let up like 31 or something like that, but they still get the win, so that's what matters in the end. Next is Kansas at number four, TCU. TCU blanked Kansas. It was 43 to nothing, and really didn't we expect anything less. Uh, it is TCU, and Kansas has not been a good football program for a long time, if ever. Uh, number 23, West Virginia at Baylor. Now, I had West Virginia winning this one. This one was a lot closer than anticipated. Uh, West Virginia comes away with a win, but it was a 38-36 to win over Baylor. So Baylor, again, is continuing to lose games and is still winless on the season. Not many games left for them to try and get wins on. Uh, next was Colorado at Washington State, number 15 Washington State. Uh, coming off the loss to uh, Cal last week, Washington State was looking to bounce back, and they got a 28 to nothing win over Colorado. They blanked Colorado, which is good. Uh, next on my list was Boston College at Virginia. Uh, this was one of the games I added because I thought Virginia was going to win this game, and that they were, um, if they won it, they would be in the top 25. Marshall, um, sorry, Marshall, I'm jumping ahead here. <laughs> uh, Boston College. Didn't let that happen. Boston College won the game 42 to 10. Boston College has proceeded to score 40 plus points in the last two games. They put up 80, I think 87 points in the last two games. Unheard of for Boston College in recent years. Like they they've been struggling to score in almost every game, and all of a sudden they just caught. Ooh, excuse me. They all of a sudden they just caught fire. It's it's insane. So I got that one wrong. And last but not least, I had Marshall at Middle Tennessee. I had Marshall winning this game, and they did 31 to like 10, something like that. Uh, Marshall comes away with a win. So it remains undefeated and in the lead for their conference, uh, their half of their conference. Their uh, biggest competition right now is Florida Atlantic. So those were my. Uh, games that matter this week. Marshall did win their game, but did not become ranked. Now, for what bothered me about this. I got 18 out of the 19 games correct, which is a 94.7% correct rate, which is really good. But if I hadn't added that Boston College-Virginia game to this, I, uh, I would be at 100%. And that's what bothers me, is I want that 100% correct rate just once, at least once. And in the top 25 games, I did have all of them correct, but I added that, so I gotta, I gotta, I made my bed, I gotta lay in it. So anyway, that's my uh, recap for the week 8 games. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you like what I'm doing here. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think is going to happen as we close out the season here. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. And at the end of the month, not this weekend, but the weekend after, um, sometime in that between those two weekends, I'm going to be releasing a video um, detailing possible playoff situations. Um, 
I'm working on that right now. I got another one ready for you guys coming on probably this week. It's going to be a sort of quote unquote mid season Heisman status and my prediction on who I think could win the Heisman this year. So thank you guys for tuning in. And like I said, if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video.